Namibia has been independent for more than 29 years now, and the story of the struggle has been told over and over again. But yet there are those who were heavily involved in the struggle, but still feel unrecognized for their deeds and hard-fought battles that brought the enemy to their knees. As we navigate through the list of the known and unknown war veterans, we came across six liberation struggle heroes who are willing to have a sit down with us, former combatants of the People's Liberation Army of Namibia, known as PLAN, and share their journey through the struggle. The People's Liberation Army of Namibia PLAN was the military wing of the South West Africa People's Organization, SWAPO. It fought against the colonial South African Defense Force and South West African Territorial Force during the South African Border War. These men and women translated their accounts of events and battles as they had waged during their tour of duty inside and outside the country. Ngi Alasha Elisa Elia Haulionjaba, born in Onekwaya village, Ohangwena, was a plan fighter under the G4 platoon. He joined OPPO, the Ovambo People Organization, in 1957. Haulionjaba later transferred to join plan competence and was designated to the Eastern Front. His responsibilities included being a medical staff and an artillerist commander. In politics, I was motivated, you know, at Ondobe by some of our politician leaders, uh, Franz Daniel Mishimbi Wadila, uh, Lucas Pohamba, Patrick Kakwambi, and others. We were used, used to be told to go to village to village to ask people to come to the to the meeting of the OPPO. That is that like term is OPPO. We want to go abroad because there is a, a problem in, in in Namibia, inside say the West Africa at that time. You go to the work, you cannot get uh, enough money. You are humiliated by the white, you are just a kafa. Maria Nandenga. The wife to Zulu Nandenga was born in Ehonge Ohangwena region. She too joined PLAN to become a fighter due to the enemy who invaded Namibia. In exile, she was trained in military and became one of the few female commanders on the Northern Front. <laughs> Uh, Okujapo, ne, mo, 1974, mo, November. Nda kwata kehalo, lo kukajo ina oplana. Andi jaina no plana modulamo. Training ange, ondi training irwa mefitu laiti ananjaba. Mo Angola. Moses Nganate, a descendant of Botswana by Namibian parents, Nganate joined PLAN in 1962 with the aim to liberate his parents' country from the colony and went through military school in North Korea. When the struggle started now, uh, people campaigning about the struggle that some people are going for training and so on, I left the school. I decided to join the struggle. In 1962, we went to Francis Town in Botswana, where we stayed in a place called 
white city in white house in Francis Town. 64 is when we cross to, to, to Zambia. So they really think that created me or forced me to join the plan was because my parents came from Namibia and uh, while we were there we heard about the, the struggle that people are struggling to, to liberate Namibia and I have forced myself to join that it's only the thing forced me to join the liberation struggle. Jonas Shiweda, with the combat name Tate Womontengo, Shiweda was born in Onikwaya village. Under the command of Moses Nganate, he was a planned fighter of the fourth group platoon known as G4. Tate Womontengo, I know him. Uh, he's from the, our neighbor village, Onikwaya East. Uh, I know him before we went to abroad, and abroad we were together. I met him in Zambia. He went before me in abroad, and uh, I learned, he told me, he was in the G4. Mandume Meshikwa. Hailing from Embo, Mandume joined Opo. Motivated by Kahumba Kandola, he then traveled to Tanganyika, now known as Tanzania, and North Korea for military training. By that time, he was known by his combat name, Kanyamukulwa. At a school, and even at the church, we used to have a lot of Namibian, the former Swapo politicians. They used to come there and the teachers. So that is how we started uh, loving and even joining Swapo. By then it was Opo. Opo is the mother of, of Swapo. The man who used to tell us that one is Tatekulu Kahumba Kandola and even Tatekulu Mze uh, Kaukungwa. In 1964 is when we left Odibo to join the, uh, the, the plan. We went to Botswana, uh, to the border of South Africa, on foot. That's why it took us exactly three months. Amutenya Tuhadileni Nandenga, known by his combat name Zulu, joined plan in Balfour's Bay because of the condition of slavery in the apartheid era. He was trained in military school in Tanzania and then furthered his training in North Korea. On the day in 1958, the people and the people organization, OPPO, 1958, come by. On the day in the morning, we were in the morning. The German Empire had administered Namibia as the colony of German Southwest Africa during the late 19th century. During the first South African troops under General Louis Botta occupied the colony and deposed the German colonial administration. The end of the war and the Treaty of Versailles left South Africa in possession of Southwest Africa under a League of Nations mandate 
under the terms of the mandate, the South African government was only permitted to administer South West Africa until its inhabitants were prepared for their own political self-determination. However, South Africa interpreted the mandate as a veiled annexation and made no attempt to prepare South West Africa for future autonomy. Beginning of March 1962, Nioma dispatched two recruiters, Gifike Punye Lucas Pohamba and Elia Mwatale, to Ovamboland, where Swapo's traditional political base was located. Pohamba and Mwatale succeeded in recruiting hundreds of volunteers for a new guerrilla army, which was subsequently named the Southwest African Liberation Army, Swala. Swala's headquarters was established in Dar es Salaam, the capital of Tanzania, which was sympathetic to Swapo's cause. The Tanzanian government permitted Swala to set up a training camp at Kongwa, where the volunteers would receive guerrilla training. The Soviet Union, Ghana, Egypt, Algeria, North Korea and the People's Republic of China all offered free training programs for Swala recruits, provided they were able to make the necessary travel arrangements. In September 1965, Swala established its first training camp on Southwest African soil at Omgulu-Wombashe, one of the five potential bases identified by Swala's initial reconnaissance team as appropriate sites to recruit and drill more insurgents. At the time, Swala numbered only about 250 personnel, most of whom were still undergoing training at Kongwa. South Africa was powerful forces in the South, in, 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 in Africa. Yeah. Compared to the other military, uh, they were compared that South Africa was compared to, to, to Egypt, who were having a strong arm, um, Air Force, who were just few, a detachment facing a battalion. I say. The insurgents at Omgulu-Wombashe succeeded in recruiting only 30 locals before the location of their camp was compromised to South African forces that later attacked the camp. The planned war unit used various tactics to invade the country and attack the South African forces. The structure after the people were trained, they set up a structure and regrouping, regrouping the, 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 the unit. When you send people inside the country, you cannot send a big number. People were trained. It's a guerrilla warfare to, to attack in the group, small group. Any group which is going to inside the country, they were, they were sent in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the unit or in the in the composition of just 15, some 15, some 10, some they were not more than of that because they were. No people, the main power were, were lagging. When we went to Tanganyika, we went right away to a place called Okongwa. So we are the, the second group to enter Okongwa, the first uh, Suapo military training uh, base. We were trained right in the combat, in the, right in the combat. It was general training. And then after that, we were uh, chosen to go uh, after a year or, or and a half. We went to 
the first a Namibian who went to be trained at a Northern Korea. The first a Namibian to enter in Northern Korea. Haulion Jabba was an engineer and overall a chief of operation for the front in Angola. I was trained and specialized in artillery. B1082, 75, 76 mm anti tank. Zulu Nandenga, he served as a medical staff, a commander, and a comsat of the soldiers at the North Front, as well as serving as a member of the military council in Angola. Zulu and Haulon Jabba take us through their most epic battles to date, showing how determined plan was to liberate their motherland. We attacked Kamenga base. A major battle, all of the Lakula, between Kamenga, starting with Kamenga. Kamenga base uh, was in the border. South Africa created a, a base there between, uh, just in the corner where uh, Kwandu River then and uh, from, from, from the west, the land, I mean the border went up to Katima Mulilo as well, was a big base there. But you think about it, you can buy it. You can buy it. A major battle with Dindarwa to do the dual road. We fought many battles on that area. I remember the big battle I faced we fought is where we captured the war material, first plant captured for war material. We could talk to you if we have. It's where, for the first time, we fought hand to hand with the enemy. When you are cross with the enemy, you cannot fire anymore. You are just uh, within a, a, a five meters or you know, two meters, you cannot fire. We use only bayonet, the, 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 the knife and the gun hand to hand. The material were used in Swapo in the meeting of uh, in Sudan on the meeting of OAU 10th anniversary. Uh, Swapo got a good point there. It's, was recognized that it is a fighting unit. Yeah, I mean it's uh, have fighting unit because we show they were captured material. Small in Japan, playing on Nai, Dava to command Paul Omaro Joe, I'm Zulu, I'm Mommy, or William Japan, I will play with main that they bomb. Young people in Japan have ticket at Rumbu to Melan, Umbu to bomb. Near Comet and Monga Shin Ganate, we only are more good to your 
Soit on était le Templana, pas au Shwed. Après la opération de Zambia, en 1999, je suis revenu au headquarters de l'Oshikopwa. J'ai resté seulement deux jours. Et l'ennemi a lancé une opération qui m'a attaqué ces jours. C'est l'opération qu'ils appellent une opération opération. Et un autre terme, c'est l'opération opération. They attack that base from 8 o'clock, the Air Force's bombardment, and uh, 12 o'clock, the ground came. We were, it was very surprising, we were not expecting South Africa reaching that area on, on the ground. Uh, we were having a detached uh, a region, northeastern, northern, northwestern. The, the headquarters is in the rear. We thought this enemy, when it's crossing the border, and they, will first face the, those region, and then the, the front, the front will form the. the apparently, South Africa is using a, a tactic of jamming all communication. That they no communication with the front. To run out with one, you need to do it. So you need to go. The friend who was our friend, you need to attack our unit in your stumba. People are doing an emperor. As emperor, I recognize him. You need to never recognize him. One a combatant sacrificed there, Juru was wounded, and he managed to escape. The report came back to the headquarters in our name that we were attacked. We did not reach there. One sacrifice, the car was burned. It's where we immediately met the senior in the front, Bunganga, Zulu, and me. I was called, What should we do now? We cannot go further while we are attacked in the rear. We should defend our area. The unit which we used to go inside were recalled. Uh, it was now uh, 76. We recalled back to clear our area supply. The unit was basing in also having uh, some bases in in, in, in Oshitumba. How long did that wait? At the time, unit to go in Pela, Nakuba. I think we need to. We clear up and then the road was open and then we started again, divided the main power somewhere, guiding our area base, I mean area route. The war waged on for so long that to some the picture of independence started to become dim and dull. But for Haulion Jabba, he was aware of the enemy's tactics to delay independence. Kasinga. Um, the independence was uh, 1978. People were talking about the independence to come, 435 to be implemented. But South Africa maneuvered. He, he, that's why he went to bomb Kashinga, so that he can delay that implementation. The group five, group five of West, Western power who were given a task to make sure that South Africa uh, comply with the, the demand of UN to remove his administration from Namibia. Now, we were having a, a hope that it, South Africa would comply. Zulu was later promoted from a captain of Platoon C to a major a regional commander of the northern front of the Ovambo area. In 1981, Haulion Jaba was withdrawn from the front and was sent for police training in Tanzania. He later went on to become a member of the military council until independence. Jonas Shueda, who was of the eastern platoon known as the G4, led his forces to attack the enemy from the east as a second-in-command to Moses Nganate. 
Shiweda, who was currently paralyzed and unable to speak, had a near-death experience after being captured by the South African colonial forces. Moses Nganate was the commander of G4. Together with Shiweda as his deputy, Nganate recounts his battle leading up to him being shot. Due to Shiweda's health condition, Howlon Jabba narrates his accounts. So in 1962, when the struggle started now, uh, people campaigning about the struggle that some people are going for training and so on, I left the school, I decided to join the struggle. In 1962, we went to Francistown in Botswana, where we stayed in a place called Quiet City in Quiet House in Francistown. Uh, from there we went to Tanzania, Tanzania then some of us, me and other colleagues, we were about 10, we went to uh, North Korea for training as a military, in the military training. The time we came back from the from the training, I was the was given the the, the G4 group. I was in the G4 group as the head of it. Uh, I was with the comrade. Uh, I was with the comrade uh, Jonas Chiweda, whom I understand now is paralyzed. He told me he was a second in command of the group. The group commander was uh, Nganate. He's the one whom we went together. We crossed the river through Kwando River, then head into um, to, to Rundu. So, we crossed, so it was in the afternoon. He told me that day that uh, uh, it was uh, midday when they reached the area, I think it's Kongola, in the small river there. When we crossed the river, we walked a little bit because we were we were taken by the vehicle, then some of the, our leaders, when they went back, then we had to, to travel now, footing. Castroli told them that the, this area he know uh, is uh, peaceful, they should do, take off their cloth and wash and wash themselves because they walk a long distance. While Castroli is going to the village to see if to get information if the enemy used to come to that area. We have a little rest. It means the place where we are resting, next to it is where the, the dwarves had a camp there. Uh, Tato Shweda said after they was, he was his cloth, he was only left with uh, uh, underway, underwear. The nature called and he left others. He said, I, I went only few few meters from others. And Castroli, he went for almost a one hour. Well, we had a, a little rest there. We saw a person just moving behind us. When he moved behind us, another one was coming to, it means they were camouflaging us, they were just attacking us, coming from behind. Before to return, what he had, is what I told me that, what he had, he had only the sound of the the vehicle, I mean the door of the vehicle closing the deep. Uh, they, they were trying to drive us to the camp now. It means these who are coming behind, 
when they started shooting, we immediately we started now noticing that oh something is happening. Uh, he was behind of the some of the bush, and the gun started uh, open. Ta -ta 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 -ta. And he heard others crying and shouting. And we pulled out our guns and. The, as they were driving us towards the camp, then I, with other comrades, we took the left direction. Some went straight there. He he waited a little, and he moved away from the the area. And the, the gun after stopped firing. The boy, they were he heard that the. There was sound, I mean, the boy, they were, the white, they were talking in the Africans, Fangom, Fangom, Fangom. Some, they took another direction, then I myself, I took another direction. Then I started now shooting. It was only to shoot, to try to open the way for where to pass. It means uh, I saw some in front of me, those I uh, just swept them out. Then I had to pass. When I passed, it was now getting dark. He ran away. He went to the bush, and he, he said he walked uh, around about three kilometers. He, he found a a, a footprint, and he followed it. Up. He followed them on the on the on the, on the some distance. He surprised, found the bushman have a gun, and the, surrounding him that you should not move. They would kill him. It means it's when they shoot me here. Yeah. Then they shoot me here. So I believe the one who shot me, I believe he was down now, I shot him already. And he was just trying to shoot me while he was wounded or something like that. They took him to their heart. Uh, after a few minutes, the vehicle arrived, the fort arrived with the the, the whites, and they say, yes, that's the men whom we are looking for. They only survived two. I took about three, I mean seven days, just in the bush, plus this wound. Now it was very difficult for me to walk until Capri Street. There I was trying to call now, calling everyone. I had remained with one bullet in my gun, noticing that, uh, thinking that if someone like this enemies can find me, I have to kill myself. They started asking him, where's others? Well, you only survived two. We wanted to one. He cannot tell. They arrest him. They chain him. They put him in the vehicle, what he told me. They went up to the base where the, the enemy based. Then I took the long distance, that distance I walk, I walk, I walk, but now trying to call, ooh, ooh, calling people who can help me, those of, uh, of the canoe. And the following morning, came one person with a canoe. His arm was chained behind. He left, he was left after the tent. The, the enemy, the soldier went inside the tent. They left him guided by the, by the dog. He decided and he took his arm down and then his arm came to up to the on the front. He hid me in the in the river bank in the river bank. I stayed a week in the river bank there. 
uh, in the in the trenches there. That's so why I've stayed stayed there for, for a week. So I don't know what he did. Done. He, he informed Comrade uh, Topias Ainyeko. The time Topias Ainyeko went there to see me at Kaprip Strip, he he found me there. Then he said, "No, now you um, just get this money and get to Lusaka. Back to Lusaka." I am going back with the pantoon to the place where I'm staying. Then is the time Comrade Yanyek was, was shot and killed by the Boas when he, he went to me. After a long fight commanding the plan fighters, the plan strategic committee decided to release him from battle, which led him to return back to Botswana in 1970. Later, uh, Comrade um, Lucas Bohamba, the former president uh, came to me and asked, now when you are in this situation, do you still want to go back to the field or you want to go back home to where you came from and have a little rest when you mean to, to Botswana? Then I said, no, I want to go uh, to Botswana to have a rest a little bit. After he saw the dog was also the dog, because the rain is, was too heavy, the dog was leaning. And he jumped while he was on the handicap behind of the, the, the tent. The dog started barking. Bum, bum. He ran. Uh, midnight, he said, yes, they were trained how to read the star in the, in the, in the sky. He had no compass, but his compass was on the um, was leaded by by by, by star. Hey, Kamona, which are west, the north is. He remember. He said he remember how they were trained. He said he, they were trained how to release if you are handicapped and they want to get out from the handcuff, what material you, you can use. He told me that the, they were told in Egypt that the handcuff can be released itself when you unite itself in the, in the, on, 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 on it, it will be automatically uh, getting off. And then he reunited and make a tanga motashita minimum. Only my 15 minutes. Just go at inga ike tanga ili singa. Yali ili singa. He come free with only very short. Cause he remained because he was he left. I see you with your penya with a kosho. Kwenda da chokwa dimo kumto kwenda umafikiri ya vali la tatu hasa vivinga shike mokulia umatindi enyo ma o ma o mbutu nu dilona da chokwa du dilona lo vali pamba da gu dilona vi gu dila they were trained how to that you don't know how to do it, you don't know how to do it. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to Just facing the north direction. Shiweda later became chief of logistics and armory and a member of military council in Angola. Nandenga, known for her combat name Valombuleni, she commanded a number of soldiers at a camp near Kasinga. She recounts her battles in exile as a base commander in Angola. Mumilongo heari na nano. Mumu. Mona vombangondi wetelo mokotoba. Tata kwa kontondi. Embulu. Detuanga mefitu. 
no kufa duka pano kwe. Sha shokushi shi na na kuchia. Na shotune misela. Odonga dishi kule dilad. Ohe ke taba kile ta dengu fikune tafa duka potai. Si ma guali no shi tele la wanga gwan na kuli wanangala. After the training of those who offered to join the Liberation War, not all made it to the war front. Mandume Mweshihwa, who was part of the first group that entered North Korea for military training, but due to his age, he never made it to the war front. I was supposed to join G4, and then commanders, especially Commander Hainyeko, they said, uh -uh. anybody who is under 20, you are not allowed to go back to Namibia. Because by then I was under 20. They said, only over 20 years old will go. Otherwise, you, most of you, you have to join uh, either further education. You did your training already in North Korea. And now you come back again, you did everything. What you need now is to continue with your further education. Mushihwa, he furthered his education in Kenya and later at the University of Manchester in Great Britain, which qualified him to be an education teacher. He became a teacher at Tobias Hanyeko Education Centre in Angola. After independence, Manduma Mushihwa became a teacher upon his return to Namibia at various education institutions in northern Namibia and later became the director of the DBC unit, Development Brigade Corporation in Groetfontein. We started training the youth Namibians. I was the director and uh, we started the training people from all over Namibia. So I used to move all over, Nam all over Namibia to, do, uh, to make a, a selection of people who are going to Ukhrot uh, Fondain, DBC. After maybe five years or six years somewhere there, DBC uh, became a national youth service. And then uh, I, I worked there, only DBC, the name changed to become a national youth service. Then as a result, I stayed only one year in the National Youth Service. Then I said, now, uh, I have to leave this and uh, leave it in the hands of the youth. The National Youth Services specialize in delivering national services and personal development programs to the youth through training and creating opportunities for skills development and career paths for the youth. And as it has been demonstrated by them when they joined the liberation movement at a young age, their wishes for the future of the country is for the youth to prosper and have the chance to take this young nation to greater heights. Oh, I wish the youth of Namibia to be given opportunity to product, to make, to make some production. I can say, I, I can tell you. Why I was in, in Russia in 1970, I was told how China developed. The leader of uh, Chinese is, was Mao Zedong. The, the Prime Minister was Choi Lai. They went to Russia after independence. You know, China got to independence 1948, recently after Second World War. They went to Russia 
I was told. And they say they are going to establish a socialist republic in China. And the Russian said, yes, good, enough. What do you have to do now, you lead the two? Go back to home, send your, your children to be, your, your students to be trained here to be how to manufacture. What they did, they went to China, they sent two million students to Russia. The Rush told me that those, those two million giving us a headache, every village you go, just a Chinese. Every factory go is a Chinese, a group of Chinese. We say, what government, our government is doing this? And uh, they say, some came for two years, course three years, five years, four years, five years. After completing, they went back to Ch China. The Russians said, we monitor them. It take them only 10 years. All factory in Russia are in China. Manufacturing, it is modifying everything. This is what I said, oh, why, why we should not be supposed to do that the same as our children? Giving them more opportunity because this, we elder, we only did what we, we did. Well, we are now in the, in the world of, of computer. We cannot run a computer. The country was free, but yet for some mentally they were not free. Flashes of the war cries still lingered in their conscious and some to an extent of having nightmares. Myself up to now, I, I don't sleep well. I used to just jamming from the, from the sleep because I used to see my colleague whom I was together, they, I was together, whom they were somewhere under my command, who were, I know, who, who were captured by the enemy, alive, whom I was thinking I will see them release when we get independence. But uh, it's zero. I was going to go to the door. 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 Nevertheless, after all what they have been through, today they live a normal life with their families. Wo kahanja no kuli, ndari o mafu mo maulu, on pehai palake diva, mood barindi futule, dani gila komongule. Di mati ndato ndoka mo kadiva, owa kadiva iva, haiva kotele kakulu, owa ndo beha iva fufi kwe ungu ne kovidi ishorimu. Amati o mpanyama u.